So, welcome back to Third Age Reforged and to another battle replay on the current build, 0.96.1, and you can see just poking over the top of the hill there, we have a siege on classic Dol Guldur today, which I figured I may as well show, considering we showed off the ruins of Dol Guldur, the new map, not so long ago, so there is a bit of continuity there. And it is winter as well, which does of course mean that the snow can get a little bit bright in places, like down there, but hopefully the brightness settings mean that once it's rendered on YouTube it won't be too offensive to the eyes, and also most of the action is going to be happening within the fortress anyway. I have to say, Dolgador looks almost serene in the winter, if not for the spikes adorning the outer walls and towers. Um, but yeah, Dolgador is a very simplistic but quite effective fortress with this sort of lower section down here, and then moving up onto the higher section of course. It is, again, very simple in terms of layout, but it is also very it's very interesting to see how these games can work out, especially considering we have three elven factions on the defence today. We have Bloodbath McGrath playing as Linden, we have T.W. Woolley playing as Enladris, and I believe we have new player 195, indeed we do, playing as the Realm of Lothlorien. So it's good to see Lothlorien because if any of you managed to catch that Scouts of Entertainment livestream that I did with him where I was talking about the mod, you don't see a lot of Lothlorien because they don't really have an awful lot of... They don't have something which really defines them when you compare them to the other Elven factions. Like, if you're going to go for an aggressive strategy, you're going to pick Imladris over Lothlorien. If you want archers, you're going to go Mirkwood. If you want a more balanced approach, you're going to go Linden. So, I'm glad to see Lothlorien here, because while they don't have too much that's unique about them in 0.96 to my eyes, uh, they are still very effective in the right hands. Uh, and we have all four of the evil men forces from the east on the attack today, with Khand, Umbar, Harad, and Rune. So we'll go through the attacking armies first of all in a little bit more detail, starting off with Tundra's Fox, who's going to be playing as Khan. So all of the evil men used to the arid plains of the east and south are probably going to be a little bit confused as to what this white substance they're walking through is. Um, but several units of Nurad Footmen. Obviously the AP is going to be useful somewhat against Imladris, but against Lothlorien, and certainly Linden less so. The AP not going to be as effective there. Nomadic Light Infantry, of course, you know, just here for the numbers, pushing up that siege equipment. Whenever a unit has got over 250 men in it, you know that it's not going to be the last word in terms of overall quality. Uh, so it's certainly along the same sort of lines as, like, Orc Marauders from Angmar. But further back down the hill, uh, we do have some more interesting units, such as the Brotherhood of the Axe. Very, very effective shock infantry. Again, going to be more useful against the likes of Imladris, because that AP will have an effect. Um, but even so, Axemen do have a little bit less skill in comparison to Heavy Swordsmen. Uh, so that also could come into play if they go up against Heavy Elven Swordsmen, particularly from Linden. The Black Powder Huacha, which, if they can get that into position in the tight confines of Dol Guldur, that could wreak havoc. It could also get a lot of friendly fire if they're not careful. Um, but I'm a big fan of the Huacha. I'll be interested to see how it actually performs in this environment. Uh, several units of very Ag Bowmen, obviously, archers on the attack. You know, you have to be prepared for the fact that they're going to be under fire for quite a lot of the time they're in action. Um, but this is the, exactly the sort of arch unit you want because they've got a shield, they've got decent armour, they're not very expensive. They're going to be here to just like, try and whittle down the defenders and force a response from them because obviously the defenders can't just let these archer units, even if they're not the highest quality, just have at it on the defensive positions. Uh, Nurad Halberds as well, the Phalanx is going to be the most useful thing there. Two of, well, all of the Elven factions on the defence could bring pikes. Um, Merkwood are really the ones that struggle against the Phalanx more than, more than the others. But the Halberds could still come in handy just because of that Phalanx formation. The Nomadic Marauders, of course, Axe Throwers, they can be damaging against just about anything if they can get into the right position. The problem is very, very low armour. Definitely going to be the subject to any sort of arrow fire should they get close enough. Uh, more halberds over there, and that's going to be pretty much it, as well as some nomadic infantry, very, very similar to the very Ag Bowman. Uh, let's head over to the player who sent me this replay, who is going to be Hunter Wayward, so big thank you to him. He is playing as Root today, so he's got some Baltroth Sapphire Bladesmen over here, good javelins, of course, the Gambrim, the Clansmen, all of the golden armour of Rune, again, offsets very, very vividly against the snow. Uh, more Gambrim, of course, again, the Phalanx could come in handy, but the Elves could have plentiful pikes as well. Some heavy spearmen in the Scion Rim, very, very resilient, of course. East strong Clansman again. He's got a bit of a spread out army, to be honest. Flag Rim, very Ag mercenaries again, very similar to the very Ag Bowmen in what they offer. Carmel's Chosen, very, very good general's bodyguard unit in this sort of situation. The crossbows, the attackers, the defenders rather, are going to need to deal with them. Flag Rim, Shadow Bows, and Nar Rim. So, a balanced army from Rune. The AP throughout their army may not be as useful in this situation as it could be against Kingdoms of Men, but still, against Imladris. All of the Evil Men factions really, except for Umbar, have certainly got a, a big focus around AP. 
So, we now have the Haradrim over here from XMRTOTT. -T. He's got some Muhad Beast Tamers on the front line, so again, the Phalanx is going to be in full effect. That's a lot of Muhad units in addition to the Muhad Warriors as well, so he's gone for a bit more bulk from Harad than we usually see in terms of infantry. And usually we just see Haradrim Spearmen, some elite infantry, and then supporting units. That seems to be the meta in point nine six for them. Not the case here though, a lot of Muhards, and obviously this is going to be bad if they get caught by arrow fire, but they're pretty decent in melee for what they cost, so maybe this numbers focused approach will work here from XMR. Beast Hunters as well, so yeah, this is almost a fully Muhard focused army, I like this, it's a sort of a theme army really, because he's also got the Trollmen, which also blend in. They must be absolutely freezing up on this mountain though, there's also a unit of Haradrim, a couple of units of Haradrim archers to be fair as well, because there are no Muhard archers, uh, as well as a catapult as well, so final attacking army of course we have the daddy of them all when it comes to the evil men of the east and south umbar from supreme supremes great name customers legion of course again in the last patch preview that we did uh, we talked about how the umbar are very reliant on their customers legion to be competitive which umbar are going to get a couple new things just to try and offset that a little bit to make sure well to try and make it so that Castamere's legion are not brought in every match as big a fan as i am of them umbar have become a little bit predictable with how we always see them uh, but it is the right move so you certainly can't uh, blame supreme for bringing them over here another interesting unit uh, the Harbingers of Castamere. Uh, they are going to be changing from a dual wielding unit to being just a, a single greatsword in the next patch. So if you think about something like the Temple Executioners or the Haven Guard or the Dunedain Captains or the Nolder and Blademasters, that's the sort of unit that the Harbingers of Castamere will become, which I think is a good thing because honestly, a little bit underwhelming in 0.96. You rarely see them because they don't do enough damage quickly enough. They're pretty difficult to kill one-to-one -one because of their skill, but the problem is they don't have enough men in the unit to really make that as big a factor as it could be. Corsair Savages, of course, not a lot of skill from these guys, pretty much the polar opposite. Shirtless as well, so they must be cold. And we've got some Numenorean Shield Guards, so a little bit more quality in this army, it seems. Avrazani Nadubawi, Corsair Savages, some Black Guards, and then further back down the hill, some Sentinels, and some Nadubawi as well. So yeah, more of a quality-focused approach, it would seem. There's probably crossbow Corsairs hidden around here somewhere, Corsairs of all shapes and sizes hidden. Uh, because there's a lot more on the radar there than is showing up, but that's to be expected from you from factions that can field a lot of hidden units within the settlement itself. So every defensive faction is kind of molded together. So we're just going to be going through this very quickly because I'm sure you all know what to expect from the elves by now. Lothlorien axes, obviously, they trade in their swords for axes, and this makes them a little bit better in terms of dealing damage than other units of a similar type. A um, little bit less defensive skill, but more attack. It's the trade-off that you make when you compare them to a unit like the Imladris Guardians, for example. Uh, and in this case, I think that's honestly probably a good thing. I mean, against a lot of these more numerous evil men factions, you're going to need to cut through them pretty quickly. The Lothlorian Axes will provide that. Uh, Lothlorian Spears, some Ethel Tirith over here as well. Mather Ilaz Gellan, Mithlon Pikes, Sylvan Rangers. There's cavalry of all shapes and sizes in there as well. Horse Archers, mainly it looks like Imladris have brought their calf, including the Gwythi Rock, and also some Knights. God Helim are already firing, that's probably just because they're on fire at will though. I'm sure that TW Woolly will sort that out. More Linden units over here, Harland and Infantry of course, very efficient. More Harland and Infantry, some Mithlon Swordmasters, going to be very very good against the AP Infantry of many of the attacking factions today. Lothlorian Archers, Harland and Guard, and Ladris Guardians with the armor upgrades, all sorts of Elven units over here. So yeah, you know what to expect here, there's also a Catapult up here, a High Elven Catapult from Imladris. So, without further ado. Let's begin. And I would imagine there's going to be a sally out pretty early here. Imladris' archers are already firing. I'm sure that they will come off fire at will pretty soon because they're unlikely to hit. Many of these are arrows are going to miss their mark. And also, even if arrows do hit, when, they, when they're shot up into the air in such a fashion, a unit as hardy as the Castamere's Legion is unlikely to be too bothered by it, especially from the front. I mean, to be fair, a couple of them are dying off, and this might be because uh, the God Helim are one of those units which are firing. But to be fair, I think Umbar will probably accept the god Helim using their ammunition in such a way. The Realm of Imladris bringing their cavalry outside the walls, the Elder Runway Haru Myro. And honestly, they should probably be very aggressive with this cavalry, especially against Umbar. Umbar is like there for the taking, I think. Their army is very scattered. Uh, they do have some Corsair Black Guards there, which were revealed, but honestly, I don't think that's too much of a problem. I feel as though Umbar, they don't have too many anti cavalry options out on the field today. All of the others have their Phalanx units. Harad in particular have got a lot of Muhad units, so it's probably not worth going after them, but 
I think you need to use the cavalry early here. Because if you just leave them in the settlement, they're just going to get bottled up and they're going to be useless. Well, anyway, there is the danger here, of course, that uh, the attackers could spend a long time getting into position to assault the walls, and also there is a danger that the defenders do not sally out with their cavalry, which would be criminal, to be honest. Um, we'll see. I'll make a cut and we'll rejoin when something of note happens. So now is probably a pretty good time to rejoin, seeing as the attackers are now getting towards the walls. And naturally, on Dolgaldor, this little hill is something which the attackers will always take advantage of. The fact that you can park a unit or two of archers up here and start shooting into this section of the fortress is a very, very useful tool that the attackers can use. And both Rune with their Lokanar Rune and Khand with their Variag Bowmen are doing so. And of course, particularly with the more lightly armoured forces of Linden, this is going to come in very handy, but I think T.W. Woolley has really made a bit of a mistake here. If you don't... In well, there goes one of the gates. But if you don't intend to use your cavalry aggressively right from the start in a defensive siege, you should not bother bringing it. Because it's not going to be helpful later on. If you retreat it to the town centre, it's just going to get bottled up there. And the, the attackers simply have got too many anti-cavalry options when it comes down to a just infantry grind within the fortress. Too much of the attacking infantry is pikes and halberds for the cavalry to just be able to bury their way into that formation and do much damage. And very quickly, the Harad player did exactly the right thing by parking their pikes over here, right in front of this gate. So when the Imladris cavalry retreated back inside the fortress, they made sure that they could not then sally back out. Uh, so over here you can see that Khan and Rune ready, and the Huacha is right there. Now the Huacha is very much a loose cannon. Oh dear, oh dear. You can see up there on the hill, the archers shooting right down into this formation, going after the Mithlon Pikemen. Very, very good target, of course. Linden extremely lightly armoured, and no shields means that any sort of arrow fire is going to tear its way into the Mithlon Pikemen. Uh, this, however, I think the Huacha has just nosed out a little bit too far, and this is going to be all the excuse that Linden and Imladris need to counter-attack. Uh, but this will, of course, draw out some Elven infantry into the open field, and just look at the amount of forces that Khan and Rune have got deployed. So it is going to be pretty grisly here, but the Elven units are of very high quality, and Dol Guldur is a very defensible fortress. That little hill that the, ar the attacking archers can take advantage of is the main downside of defending on Dol Guldur, really. But other than that, Dol Guldur, it's a good size to defend, I feel, it's like, I feel like, because it's, it's not overly large. And you can really punish the attackers for trying to get too aggressive. Uh, and you can see here that the Gamprim are moving in. They're actually being backed up. Well, that's the Huacha crew. The Huacha crew certainly don't want to be in melee. But Estrong Clansmen and Gamprim trying to fight their way through the ranks of Linden and Imladris soldiers. But I don't think they're going to get too far. Both of these units are exactly the sort of thing which Mithlon Pikemen and Imladris Blade Masses will be good against. Numbers are going to be the key thing here, though, because the attackers are going to be able to pour forwards in huge quantities. If the defenders want to hold this gate, they're going to need a lot of reinforcements. Now, fortunately for them, they do have a couple of units of Harland and infantry in reserve. You can also see up here that Khand are actually getting up onto the walls at this point. The Nomadic Light Infantry claiming the walls. They are taking a lot of arrow fire already, but honestly, the attackers will be all too pleased that the Elven Archers are being used on Nomadic Light Infantry. Certainly not the... Uh, the linchpin of the attack of the attacker's hopes and dreams here. You can see there's over on the other side, Harad are going to start making their own moves into the settlement. I like how aggressive the attackers are being. They're not being overly conservative, they're forcing the defenders into engagements early on here. Now, this side of things, however, these archers are in a good position, the Ethel Tirith, they're firing in. And the Muhards are exactly the sort of units you want to go after with your archers, because naturally they are not very heavily armoured at all. And also, the Lothlorian Axes, very, very good, very skillful for Axeman. And the attack that they also bring to the field isn't going to worry the defenders too much. Meanwhile, that gate over there in the middle has also been destroyed. More and more of the Haradrim are pouring forward, so Harad being extremely aggressive. The Lothlorian Blades, the Swordsman variant, now coming forward. A little bit better at staying alive in a sustained melee with their higher defensive skill, but they don't do quite as much damage as the Axe variant. See up here, the Muhar Berserk is coming in. The Harajan force is already shaken, so there is a downside to being this aggressive, and this is the fact that these Harajan units don't have the best morale. Uh, you can see also they're coming in over here through the gate as well, so big kudos to Harad for being this aggressive. They are going to need support, and Supreme is going to provide that. The Castamere's Legion, not only are they a much higher quality unit than the Muhards that are being committed by the Harad player, but also 
they're much less likely to run into morale issues. The Castamir's Legion made of sterner stuff than the savage tribesmen of the south. Meanwhile, over here, you can see that Rune and Khan have made some progress. They have pushed through with their numbers, but the defenders have responded in kind. You can see that this unit of nomadic light infantry is kind of marooned over here. Uh, they're just going to get cut down. They have managed to sort of surround a section of the defensive position, but you can see here, mm, the Heru Myro might think about getting in here, but that's a that's the wrong move to make because there's lots of Gamp Rim in and amongst that. And, and also Nurad Halberd's now moving in, so it's going to be exactly the sort of exactly the sort of units which are going to do a lot of damage to cavalry. Now, but you can certainly see here uh, that numbers are going to be the attacker's best friend. They're moving in, uh, but the defenders have got this under control so far. They just need to hope that the quality of their units is enough to carve their way through the hordes of Easterlings and Nomads that are coming through this gate. Uh, the Mithlon Swordmasters and Imladris Blade Masters. Both very, very good units at carving their way through low-quality units quickly. But my problem is, do they have the staying power and the manpower to actually keep this held down? This cavalry is not going to help too much, to be honest with you. Up here on the walls, meanwhile, Linden are now starting to contest this as well. The Harland infantry is moving forward to meet the Nomadic Light infantry. And of course, that's going to be a very one-sided fight. The Harland infantry much, much stronger than the, than the Nomadic Light infantry. Meanwhile, those archers up on the hill still wrecking havoc, still doing a lot of damage to the defenders which are positioned in here. Fallen and archers trying to return fire. But this is something. This is exactly the sort of situation that cavalry on the outside of the settlement would be able to sort of harass and make a little bit less effective. But unfortunately, the cavalry is now trapped well and truly within the settlement. There's no way out now. There's pikes and halberds on all sides. Uh, but while Rune and Khand are making some progress on the other side, over on the other areas where they don't have that archer support up on the hill, Umbar and Harad in particular are having a few more issues. You can see the archers are right in this position, right up on this slightly raised ground. Very nice firing position. And the Casimir's Legion not able to make too much progress. Casimir's Legion can usually rely on being the higher quality line infantry unit in a fight. That is not the case against the Lothlorien Blades and Axes, however. Lothlorien do have the advantage there. Meanwhile, the fighting up on the walls, the Corsair Savages just getting absolutely dunked on by a combination of Swordmasters and Axes from Lothlorien. So Lothlorien holding firm and over on this side as well. So yeah, the defenders managing to hold down the fort on this side. But also over on this side, you can see that, that that's body piercing ammunition. So there must be a unit of Rangers. Indeed, there is the Sylvan Rangers carving their way through the Haradrim and... Harad of the army, which have certainly taken the most losses thus far. Those rangers in particular, yeah, you can see the Harad attack has almost completely fallen apart. In fact, the Muhad units crumbling in the face of the Elven arrows and the Elven infantry standing firm in the face of this very savage attack. Because the Muhad units have got decent attack values, of course. That is the upshot of them having poor armor. They are good in another way, but the problem they have now... This is a good use of their javelins at the very least. The Beast Hunters doing some good damage to the Lothlorien infantry, but look at how many units they've lost already. That was a very, very grisly assault. Meanwhile, over here, Bloodbath McGrath is... That's... I can only assume that's a misclick, because there is absolutely no way that he would try that. The Four Linda Marines literally charged out of the gate right into the welcoming arms of all of the rest of the Muhad units. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's going to be enough to break them off and they're going to fight to the death. I think they were actually... He was probably microing somewhere else and he was chasing down the beast tamers that were routing and he followed them outside. So he was probably trying to hold down the fort elsewhere. And I would imagine that's over here. So once again, you can see that Rune and Khan not really making a huge amount of progress thus far. But you can see that the Linden archers and javelins are the reason for that. They're doing an awful lot of damage and the Linden and Imladris infantry is still holding firm. Uh, the upshot of this is, of course, that the archers up on the hill over here still firing away, including the shadow bows. And the nomadic infantry has managed to take up a position on the wall, shooting into the settlement as well. Which it looks bad for the attackers, but the attackers can afford to take far more losses than the defenders. Especially being four evil men factions against three elven factions. The ratio of manpower here is heavily in favour of the attackers, very heavily. Oof, dear. Nomadic Light Infantry is breaking now. Point blank catapult shots, essentially. But they need to save the catapult ammunition, I think, for later on in the battle. Over here, meanwhile, a little bit more... Re well, some reinforcements have been added anyway. The Numenorean Shield Guard have come forward. But unfortunately, as spears, the Spear Malice is going to be coming into effect. And still, the Lothlorien Infantry just holds firm. There's some Corsair Savages coming forward to try and help out as well. But the progress they're going to be able to make against the far superior Lothlorien forces... 
it's going to be very limited. So certainly the attackers, if they're going to win today, are going to be reliant on attrition more than anything else, which again is something which can win you the game quite easily as an attacker in this situation. The onus is on the defenders to efficiently use their ammunition and resources. Oh dear, that Harad catapult's in a good position to shoot this infantry. Arrows and javelins flying backs and forwards. There is a lot of dead Lothlorien forces over here, but there's far, far more Harad corpses. That was a good hit, though, on those heavy Lothlorien spears. There are some Corsairs up there. Crossbow Corsairs, in fact. How on earth did they get up there? Here comes the next wave of Muhards, though. Harad showing no signs of slowing down, and at this point... The protecting infantry, the, ar the infantry protecting these archers is looking very, very depleted. Those Sylvan Rangers, they probably chalked up a huge amount of kills and they're going to continue to do so. The Muhad Warriors do have those shields, which are pretty good. But that's not going to save them from sustained Ranger fire. Still a fight going on up here and the Castamere's Legion pushing back the Lothlorien Swordmasters. This is more a case, I think, of numbers than anything else. The Swordmasters have already been in melee with a unit of Savages, and now they're following that up with a healthy unit of Castamere's Legion as well. It's going to be a bloody fight for the Castamere's Legion, but they could be able to win this. The Maetha Ilaz Gallen could support them, but you can see now on all sides. Well, down here the defenders are still holding relatively easily against the assault from Umbar. Of course, their fence is moving forward, as well as the Harbingers of Castamere. So Umbar coming in with some of the... Uh, some of the more heavy duty infantry. The Sylvan Rangers have actually repositioned over here potentially to try and uh, deal with the elites as they come forward. The Harad Catapult bisecting that unit of Ethel Tirith. Just look at the huge clump of Muhards. Surely these spears cannot last much longer. And without the range of fire, these Muhards are going to wash into the settlement. And they don't have any infantry over here really that can halt this, halt this progress. They do have the cavalry and a lot. Now they'll have the infantry. So it looks as though Imladris are going to come over to try and pick up the slack, which is good. This is good coordination from the defenders. Over here, the attackers have actually been pushed back a little bit. You can see that they did make it all the way in there. Having said that, more runic reinforcements have come forward, including Scion Rim, so made of sterner stuff than the Eastron clansmen, certainly. And now the defenders starting to run out of manpower over here in terms of their infantry. Decent hit there from the catapult, which that catapult's got a perfect shot. This is the time to use the catapult, certainly. Because uh, it's going to cause these infantry units to become shaken. That's a very healthy unit of flag room that's already shaken. A huge amount of casualties being inflicted here. And also they're going to start routing off. So a situation that was looking fairly dicey has now been salvaged. Thanks to the catapult. And now another unit of swordmasters and the Gwaithi Arthan have also moved forward. That brutal. The entire runic assault is now breaking. Unsurprisingly because of the position they were put in. Right at the mercy of that catapult. Good moves there. Meanwhile. The Heru Myra is still here. You can see that the the second line has been formed by Imladris. You can see that the Heru Myra have come forward, but this is not really where you want your lances to be. In the middle of a sea of onrushing Muhards. Yeah, and they're, they're going to get slowly but surely cut down, but at this point, they just needed to form up another front line, and they've managed to do that. Imladris Guardians and Elder Enway Heru Mikiel. Very, very strong front line, and the Muhard Warriors have been stopped in their tracks. However, this is a pretty key moment in the battle, I think, because if the Black Guards are able to get, you know, several volleys into this clump of Imladris Guardians, which looks like that's what they're going for, or are they going for the Haru Makiel? If they can get a lot of kills on the Imladris Infantry regardless, this is going to allow Harad to continue to advance through the settlement and meet up with the attacking Umbar Infantry as well. Maitha Ilaz Gallen. Shooting their own javelins into the back of Umbar, however. And Umbar have now got their Nadu Bawib on the front line as well, indicating they're out of ammunition. Umbar, I think, are going to be the ones to run out of steam first, purely because they have the least amount of manpower on the field of all the attacking armies. And they've been subject to the same sort of punishment as the other three. You see over there that Harad still have manpower left, in spite of the beating they've taken, purely because of the amount of Muhards they've managed to deploy. Well, there goes the uh, the Black Powder Huacha, bringing down one of the sections of wall. Huacha, are they going to try and fire into the settlement? There are these Ethel Tirith over here who are still... I think they're going after the Black Guard and the Corsair Crossbows, which is absolutely the right target. They need to stop those Black Guards. You can see over here that this attack has basically fallen apart. And I was going to say the Gwaithi Arthand are in danger of attacking out of the walls, which they definitely don't want to do. They definitely don't want to come out of the walls and allow themselves to get surrounded. The Sapphire Bladesmen are here. The enemy they have only half their men left. 
only half of one of the defensive armies. There are the Nurad Warchief Retainers as well, which are brutally effective with their Phalanx now. Some Heru Hatal coming down here as well. You can see that I think the defenders are thinking about retreating here, which if they're going to do that, they should definitely make the informed decision to retreat as a unit. Save as much of their manpower as possible. Over here, things are still going pretty well against Umbar. As you can see there, those black guards. I think there's two units of them up here now, though, because... There was one unit that only had 80 men in it. Meanwhile, Mather Ilaz Gallen also being committed to the front line. The Imladris Guardian is still holding firm. This Imladris front line, combined with the Mather Ilaz Gallen, will hold for some time against this assault. But the main problem is, I just... They don't have the reinforcements nearby. The God Heli Mahia... The Narun Aru Sentinels are coming forward. The Abrazani Nadu Baiweb are wavering. They're actually being pathed out. But yeah, this Umbar force is uh, very, very damaged at this point. Oh, here come the Nomadic Marauders. Those Haru Hatal need to get out of there. I think they're actually getting into Shield Wall. Which honestly is not going to help them. The, no the Nomad... Yeah, here we go. Nomadic Marauders. Axe Throwers. Armor Piercing. I feel as though the Amladris player is probably the newest one, because he's making a few mistakes which a veteran player would certainly not. This is not where you want your Haru Hatal, and honestly, these are the sort of margins which the defenders could lose the game by. Because one unit of Elder Runaway Haru Hatal represents quite a lot of power. And the God Helima moving forward, this, you know, you just need to get out of the way. Just standing there in the, in the path of those axes, definitely not the right way to handle things. Sapphire Bladesman also trying to get in there now. Going after the Gwaith the Arthand, I think, and the Sapphire Bladesmen have got a lot more damage than just the Nomadic Marauders have. Most of those Javelins were actually absorbed by that very depleted unit of Forland and Pikes and Harland and Infantry. Still some Nomadic Infantry up on the hill. Still Arrow Fire coming from this hill over here as well, which, considering the amount of archers that Rune and Khan had brought to the field, is unsurprising. Trying to get as much use out of them as possible. Gwaith the Arthand are doing the right thing and getting out of the way. Meanwhile, over here, now you can see the god Halim, after taking the bait, attacking into the nomadic marauders, the forces of Khan are going to jump on them immediately. And the god Halim, I think they're going to try and force path their way to the nomadic marauders, but again, just like that unit of fallen into marines we saw earlier, there's really, really not a good idea to try and do this. I mean, there isn't many units down here to actually take advantage of this. But there's only 22 of them. I mean, with only 22, a unit of 157 could actually win that fight. It would be close, considering the nature of both of the units, but still. Meanwhile, here on this front line, we can see that the Muhad Pikes have come forward at this point, which is going to make the Harad front line a little bit more robust. Harad marchers that are out of ammunition, obviously they're just here to get some more warm bodies on the front line. The Haru Myro, where Pikes are involved, they're going to fall away very, very quickly. The Harad Catapult's going to try and get into position to shoot. Harad's main problem here, I think, is going to be morale. If they continue this assault, eventually it will bear fruit. There's only so much staying power a single unit of Imladris Guardians... Actually, I think that's two units of Imladris Guardians. It's going to be able to bring to the table. This Battle of the Titans up here between the Lothlorien Swordmasters and the Castamir's Legion is still ongoing. But with the support of the Blackguard, Umbar have probably secured a notable advantage in this fight. Meanwhile, over here, Umbar are starting to make some gains with the Naruna Aru Sentinels and the Harbingers of Castamir on the front line. Looking a little bit more likely to break through. In addition to that, this hole in the wall is now being exploited by the Nurad units from Khan, so the Halberds and the Footmen are pouring in. They're getting shot point blank by some Ethel Tirith, but again, what's a few more casualties to the evil men at this point? More arrows flying into the settlement there. That's wasting the catapult ammunition as well. So it's only a matter of time, I think, before the Kandish forces over here. And the rest of the runic army also comes forward. So only half the runic army remains, but most of that is going to be tied up in skirmishes that are out of ammunition. Because a lot of that infantry sort of broke off and died in that ill-fated assault on that gate. Here are the Lothlorien Blades. Defeat seems certain, which is interesting. I'd assume that's because of outside factors, because one-to-one -one they would easily be able to defeat Nura Footman. Over here. And well, there are Brotherhood of the Axe in close proximity, but they're not in melee with that unit, so... Interesting indeed. But the Brotherhood of the Axe are here with their sort of pseudo-samurai look. I do like the Brotherhood units. 
over here. Meanwhile, Harbingers of Castamere now moving forwards with Umbar's victory over here at this point with the support of their ranged units, the crossbows and the black guard. Now their infantry is going to be able to come over here and help Harad move further into the settlement. The Amladris Guardians have held firm for a long time and I think they would have actually been victorious. Goes to show how strong they really are. Maybe not with the champions of Nafra and the Trollmen. When they move forward, that probably would have been enough to tip the balance. Uh, but especially now with Umbar threatening to charge into the rear and that overwatch support from the crossbows, it's only a matter of time before this front line for Imladris falls apart. Over here, Mather Ilaz Galen defeat seems certain. At this point, they are very much isolated. The Abrazani Nadu Bahu, we've actually are broken and fighting to the death, so. Even in the sort of disorganized state that they're currently in, the elves are still making it a little bit tricky for the lower quality forces from the east and south to actually efficiently deal with the remnants of their units. The Gwaithi Rock Door charging in here, which again, not the best use of knights. Quite a, quite a bad use of knights, to be honest with you. I mean, at the very least, it's not halberds. So they will actually be able to help in melee, and they might be the, uh, the thing which causes this unit to break. We shall see. That unit of halberds is also routing and broken. Where did the Brotherhood of the Axe go? Did they retreat back outside the walls as well? They did. I can only assume they were getting shot by something then. Ah yes, that must have been it. There were Harland and Guard right here. The knights are going to try and charge onto him without the halberds to back them up. I mean, they did just go right into the Naru Naru Sentinels, which of course is going to be devastating for them. They're going to try and get out here into the Nomadic Marauders, and they will succeed. So, I mean, maybe all is not lost. Knights are very resilient after all, but are they going to be able to try charge through here? They have managed to do a decent amount of damage to this unit, but the door is immediately going to be shut by several units of Nurad and the Brotherhood of the Axe. That's a lot of AP. Not necessarily anti-cavalry, but the AP is still going to be useful, and they're sort of caught in and amongst all of these units. They're going to continue the charge into the Black Guards, but again, knights are so expensive, you really need to use them in a better way than this. The Elven Knights in particular can be so effective. The Watcher is here. I don't know if the Watcher is actually going to be that useful when you're going up the hill into the sort of the town centre of Dol Guldur. The Gwaithi Rock Door have managed to escape, however. And they're now out in the wild on the open field. So that is something which maybe the attackers are now going to have to uh, take into account. Although they won't if the Black Guards manage to get a volley off into them. Which they did. The Black Guards obviously a very, very effective javelin unit. They don't have a huge amount of ammunition. But they managed to get a nice volley off there into the Gwaithi Rock Lord. The charge does come. Killing off more of the Black Guards, but this is going to be the end of the Elven Knights, which I think Khan and Umbar will probably accept the losses they've taken just to neutralize the Elven Knights. This player clearly doesn't know how to use the Knights as effectively as they can be used, but even so, just getting them off the field is still going to be a big weight off their minds. The Nurad Warchief Retainers are coming in now as well, which they're going to be able to kill off the Nurad very, the, the Knights very quickly. Get my words out. And there goes the Elven General. Of course, not that that's going to matter as they're defending in a siege, but still. A couple of units of axes still in the way. And victorious over here with the Umbar rear charge from the Harbingers. They have been victorious. Meanwhile, over here, Rune are now flooding forwards again. So this is going to be... This might be the last attack that Rune have in them, to be honest with you. As they move into place. More arrows flying overhead. The Warns of Elos Tyrion as well. So that's more body piercing coming in. And that's going to be going through Scion Rim and Shadow Bows. Not the worst blob to go after. Meanwhile, on the front line, these sentries still haven't moved. Which they need to, because they're going to get rearcharged by the onrushing Khan, Umbar and Harad armies. Excuse me. Nomadic Marauders. Again, if they've still got ammunition, they could be a real pain. Mithlon Swordmasters charging down the hill, setting up a front line here. Mithlon Swordmasters will be very efficient against a unit like Flag Rim. There are some Sapphire Bladesmen on the front line, however, as well, which they're no joke. They can definitely do some damage in melee. The Florian Archers are shooting. The High Elven Cathwalt sort of swiveling, trying to get into a good position to fire. I don't know if the defenders really have enough left to actually make a real fist of this in the late game. 
We'll see, I suspect. We're not going on over here. I mean, we're more or less halfway through. Absentia kills the attackers are ahead by 2%. That doesn't count routed units, I think, though, and a lot of the units which the attackers have lost have routed. So it is going to be interesting here whether the elves have got enough of a ranged presence. The Wands of Elos Tyrion could be the match winners here. There are still Sylvan Rangers back there as well, although I don't know how much ammunition they have per se. The Catapult could be extremely important as well. We saw how devastating it could be against the Rune earlier on in the battle, but I feel as though this unit of Imladris sentries could have been so good if it was parked on top of that hill. But again, it's another unit that the Imladris player again has wasted. And I, I really don't want to sort of... Especially seeing as it's probably a newer player like this, I really don't want to put someone off the game. Um, but I feel as though... You know, if you, the learning process is all about taking criticism and... Waste... You know, this is another unit that's wasted. You know, there's no purpose behind keeping them here whatsoever. They were just going to die. They needed to be retreated much, much sooner. Those are body-piercing projectiles as well, so the Sylvan Rangers still doing damage to the attackers. And Rune are the ones taking the vanguard here in this assault. And this is probably what the rest of the battle is going to be centred around. The attackers trying to force their way up this hill. There is another smaller engagement over here. The Carmel's Chosen trying to finish off a unit of Mithlon Swordmasters and Gwaith the Arthand. I don't think they'd actually do that. I think the Elves would still win. Uh, but with more and more reinforcements pouring through, they should be just fine. Again, numbers are what the attackers have in abundance. And again, this is another unit, the Gwaith the Arthand. If they had been retreated, it would have been such a good anchor to your line. Because they're so resilient, especially in their shield wall formation. A decent hit there from the catapult, but it's only on Veriag mercenaries. So it's not something the attackers are going to lose too much sleep over. What have we got going on out here? Nirad Halberts. More Carmels chosen are moving in. The Warchief Retainers. That uh, tower has been destroyed. Yeah, at this point it's just the attackers forming up their army, getting into a position where they can mount an assault on the town centre. This area over here as well. So you can see that Hunter Way were doing exactly the right thing, trying to make this engagement go as smoothly as possible for himself. He's going to try and get some units in behind. Our army is tiring. Indeed it is. I mean, I'm not surprised considering the exertions that the Runic army has been through. All of the attacking armies should be tired at this point, but there's still a job to do, and there are still good elven units they need to fight their way through as well. Although I'm not sure there's any bodyguard tier units back here. There are a couple of units of Noldorin Guard, which are really good, as well as Mithlond Marines, but I'm not sure. Well, there's some Sindar Archers, so there is a bodyguard tier unit back here. So there is an element of multiple HP, but I don't know. Defeat still seems certain, so the Veriag Mercenaries apparently not sufficient. That's crazy. I mean, I'm sure that this will flip in favour of Rune momentarily, but even so, it goes to show how hard the Elves can fight. There's still a couple of pikes down here as well that these Haradrim forces are getting caught up on. They're actually shaken, that's crazy. And again, the Imladris pikes are so, so strong, so wasting them in such a way is criminal, really, once again. Almost as criminal as misusing the Imladris cavalry, but not quite up to that standard, unfortunately. Those elven knights could have been so devastating if they were used properly. Umbar were open, wide open in that early portion, but unfortunately the, the Imladris player just didn't have the courage to charge downhill and do some damage. The crossbows and the black guards would have been a problem, but those are the targets you want to go for. Those are the things you want to charge. Deny the attacker's use of those units, because the black guards and crossbow corsairs are the reason that Harad were even able to get into the settlement at all, because they were struggling. All of those Muhad units were getting butchered en masse by the Lothlorian archers, and their infantry just wasn't making any progress. Well, down here the Gwaith the Arthans still fighting hard, and still victory seems like a certainty. Some Nurad Halberds have been moved forward now to try and flip this fight more heavily in favour of the attacking infantry. The Carmel's Chosen have been very, very heavily damaged, and that's the Runic General as well, so the morale debuff that they suffer could be exactly the sort of thing the defenders are looking for to get them back in this game. Mithlon Swordmasters victory seems certain. I mean, to be fair, they're mostly fighting the Variag Mercenaries, so that's not really too surprising at all. 
catapult is now in position, however, and this could be... This could be a real flashpoint in this game. More routing from the attackers, more minor route this time, but unfortunately now the attacking catapult could be the sort of thing which uh, decides this fight. That defensive catapult now has crumbled. The Scion Rim are routing more of the runic forces, so Rune could be the first army to fall here. The Mithlon Swordmasters are charging down the hill. There's not too many Valtros Sapphire Bladesmen left, and they're also shaken, but again, the defenders are pulling back. They're in such a big blob as well, they've actually made a, a more tempting target for the Harad Catapult. I'm not really sure what the defenders hope to accomplish here. Yeah, they, they, they blobbed up next to the Catapult, which was clearly the target. And not only was that shot able to kill off a catapult, but also a, a clump of Mithlon Marines. So, very, very puzzling choice that from the defenders. I know that the pathfinding in a siege like this can be a little bit awkward. But even so, it's still a weird choice to sort of pull off the front line and sort of into a more advantageous position for your enemy's catapult to hit you. Still a lot of men as well in reserve. I mean, it's certainly not the the legions that we saw earlier on, but with units like the Champions of Nafarat, the Brotherhood of the Sword, which I actually missed in the army comps, the Trollmen, there's also the uh, the War Chiefs as well, War Chief Retainers somewhere around here. Those are strong units. Meanwhile, over here, the Carmel's Chosen have just been absolutely shown what for by the Gwaithi Arthand. Gwaithi Arthand may not kill things too quickly with their, you know, weapon of choice being a spear, but they're so difficult to kill that they'll just wear you down, even the best units like Carmel's Chosen. And now, they're able to get in and amongst the artillery with this unit of Mithlon Swordmasters. Very depleted units. I'm actually surprised the attackers are not moving forward to take advantage of this. Lothlorien axes are here. It might be that they're worried about blobbing up too much in the face of those Wardens of Alos, Tyrion, and Sylvan Rangers, which I absolutely understand. Rangers can just devastate an infantry blob so quickly as we saw earlier on. But, they're in danger of losing both their artillery pieces here. I mean, I think the Watcher was abandoned and Tundra's Fox retreated his crew. But the Harad Catapult, which looked to be sort of securing the attacker's victory, is now getting tidied up by the Gwaith the Arthand, which really has been the saving grace for Imladris. Most of the Imladris army has been, well, some of the more key units have been misused. But they've really managed to fight hard and, and secure some good mi minor wins on the field. The Mithlon Marines as well with their javelins, doing their best with the amount of damage they can. And the attackers, they may be a little bit concerned that they're running low on manpower here, which... I mean, they kind of are. It is a pretty brutal choke point to try and take, so it is going to be a close one. Quite the Arthand at this point are taking sort of point blank arrow fire from the very out bowmen. With, with, with their armor and shields, they're not going to worry too much about that. The Nurad halberds are overwhelming these Mithlon sword masters, and even with the support of the Gwaith the Arthand. Now that the trollmen are coming forward, the gloves are coming off. So Harad once again moving forward in an aggressive fashion, trying to help out their Kandish brethren. There's also some Abrazani Nadubawi here trying to help out in stopping these Gwaith the Arthan from killing many more of their number. But again, they need to just send something in which can kill off the Gwaith the Arthan more quickly. I thought the Carmel's Chosen would be able to handle it with support, but clearly I was wrong. They need something over here. Maybe just a full unit of Nurad footmen to just dogpile on them and overwhelm them. Because at the moment, any kills they get from now are a bonus. One of the generals died. Was that the Umbar general? I don't think the Harad general would be in, a in the Trollman. I would assume he's in the Champions of Nafarat. And I think, based on the fact we saw those Corsair Blackguards weren't hidden at the start, that that's where the Umbar general was. So, the Umbar general's gone. Where is the, uh, the Runic general? Has he retreated? Some Scion Rim have returned from routing. I don't quite know where the Carmel's Chosen went, because that's where the Runic General was, and he hasn't died yet. Presumably Rune just trying to keep their General alive so the rest of their army doesn't break. Yeah, the defence holding firm here. The Abrazani Nadubari were shaken, and still, still these Gwaith the Arthan victory seems certain when they're surrounded. 
Surely with Variag Bowman and Sion Rim on the way as well, this, this marks the end of their contribution in this fight, but damn. What a performance it's been from the Elven Spearmen. Mithlon Marines firing their javelins into this block, trying to kill off some of the Trollmen, which are certainly a significant problem for them. Two units of Trollmen and the Champions of Nafrat means what Harada has got left, three units with multiple HP. They're going to need to use ranged units to kill that because they only have the Sindar Archers as a multiple HP unit. The Northern Guard are good, but the Trollmen are just so good at killing. Again, the Trollmen trade in a little bit of uh, defense. They trade in some of their defensive attributes for having more attack units of a similar nature. They're more shock infantry really, in spite of the fact they use shields. They are different from units like the Carmel's Chosen and the Knights of Anuminas. Dismounted Knights of Anuminas, I should say. These Wards of Elos Tyrion are going to be doing their best as well, but they're probably running a little bit lower on ammunition. That's where the Linden General is. The Bearded Elf. They still have their bows out. Meanwhile, this, this Imladris Catapult is sort of hitting the ground. More Javelins coming in. Again. Just hitting the floor. You'd think you'd get the message and move it. But yes, down here, finally, the Gwaithi Arthand. Only seven of them remaining. They put on a brave show, and indeed, that unit of Nurad Halberds breaks. Yet another minor victory for them. But it is going to be the last thing they do, I think. With the Scion Rim now, the Nadi Bawi, the Veriag Bowman, just numbers. Finally going to be too much for them. But still, very, very impressive. These Lothlorian Axes, meanwhile, are fighting hard on the front line. They're a very good unit, but the Trollmen, with their killing power... One unit of has only got four remaining, which I would assume is a result of the Javelins and Arrow Fire, but the second unit has also moved forward, and now comes the Champions of Nafra. Basically just the slightly scarier variant of the Trollmen, as an individual unit. And this is going to be exactly the sort of thing which gets the attention of the Rangers once more. If they can kill off the Champions of Nafra, that's a big threat in the battle gone. High Elven Catapult's trying to get into a better position. And now comes the Nurad Footmen, so I think they're going to try and push through to the Catapult, considering its current position. But the Elder Enway Spearmen are coming down into position now. And they're going to stop them, but yeah, I think that's going to be the end of the Catapult. He just pushed too far down the hill. What on earth is happening there? Units are going flying. I mean, most of that has to be Ranger Fire. Opening up on the Champions of Nafra and the Nurad Footman. And that's going to be enough to convince the Brotherhood of the Axe they want no part of this assault just yet. Yeah, the Catapult at this point is lost, but it, it did okay. The Catapult managed to break off an entire Runic Assault. I wouldn't say it's uh, the best Catapult performance we've ever seen, but it's far from the worst. Lothlorian Axe Archers, I should say, taking quite a lot of damage. The Nurad Footmen and the Champions of Nafarat coming forwards in bulk, trying to disrupt the formation of the Elder Enway Haru Vital. But now, with the support of Mithlon Pikeman and Noldering Guard, yeah, that's gonna. <laughs> the attackers don't want any of that. They immediately fell back. Well, some of the Lothlorian axes were left behind in that push, and they're just gonna be finished off. More range of fire hitting those Nurad Footmen as they try and retreat. This is actually a very interesting move, because the Huacha is... The Huacha mainly just got friendly fire there, because it doesn't have the best angle. If it moved more centrally, it might be able to kill off a lot of these units, and it would probably be worth it, honestly. Because the attackers don't have a huge amount of manpower on the front line at this, at this moment in time. But unfortunately, only one of them was firing, and it hit mainly friendly troops, including Trollman. Harland and Guard getting into position now. They still have ammunition by the looks of things. You can see over there those nomadic infantrymen up on the walls. Still proving to be a bit of a problem. I think they're going for the Mithlon Pikemen as well. This is a strong front line of Imladra Spearman and Linden Pikemen. The dream team in action. You can see what the attackers are trying to do. I mean, there's still just under 10,000 frames left. They're trying to wear down this defence because I don't... At this point, they're clearly not confident that a full-fledged assault will yield the results they need them to. And that's, I think, entirely down to the fact that the Rangers still have ammunition. As soon as if a whole blob of infantry move forward, the Rangers would just be able to get tons of damage on it. So they're not going to try and do that. Having a look, the defenders have actually moved ahead by 5%. Very, very interesting. And there you can see, routing Variag Bowman. But this is the problem the... 
attackers are facing at the moment is if they keep sending forward depleted individual units, the only thing they're going to really achieve is getting them broken. They're not going to do any damage. The elves may very well have this in the bag. Because again, just a single unit of Nurad footmen and depleted trollmen is not going to be enough to move Noldoran Guard and Eldoran Way Haru Hatal from this hill. Again, the Noldoran Guard is such a strong unit for what they are. They're not multiple HP, but damn, can they get some killing done. Scion Rim. Just sort of waiting back here. I think the time has come for an all or nothing assault from the attackers, to be honest with you. Because it's clear that the defenders are not going to waste their ranger ammunition. The rangers are waiting for the ideal target. It might come down to Khan here. They've got Brotherhood of the Axe, Retainers, and the Brotherhood of the Sword. And those are the three units you would say are the ones capable of taking on the Elven defenders at this point in time. There are the Sindar archers, though. And now the Brotherhood of the Axe are going to be the target. Yeah, I think the defenders have got this. I think this battle has gotten away from the attackers a little bit here. Here comes some Scion Rim moving forward. The, the Huacha could still turn this battle around. If they get into a position where they can do a ton of damage to this fo Elven force, which is visible, then I think the Khandish troops can, can eke out a victory. But that's a big if. So basically, this is what it all comes down to for the attackers. Can the Huacha do it? That's the Harad General. Noldoran Guard finishing off. There's still archers in and amongst the corpses, which are a little bit difficult to make out. Some nomadic infantry. The Watcher needs to fire. I mean, it, it's going to get friendly fire. There's no getting around that. But at this point, they need to do damage to the Elder Runway and the Elder Guard because they're just going to stand firm through thick and thin. The retainers are the only thing which would be a danger to them. Here we go. The Watcher is still not firing. It's very reluctant to fire, isn't it? There may be line of sight issues, because their own men are right in front of them, and the hill... I don't know how the Huacha really deals with a hill, which is why I'm kind of interested to see when it fires what it will actually hit in this situation. There's still arrows flying backwards and forwards. Still the Khandish archers trying to do what they can. Looks like they just ran out of ammunition, actually, so that's another unit of infantry they have, which they can deploy forwards. And again, nomadic infantry pretty good in melee. Certainly not up to the same level as the elven troops amassed against them, and now I think the elves, they can see that the attackers are losing stomach for this fight. Make the Ilaz Gallum being committed forward, the other unit of pikes are moving forward as well. And here come the Mithlon Marines, so yeah, this is the elven counter-attack. They're going to try and wipe the evil men from the east and south, right from the fortress. Point-blank shot from this one Watcher battery. Actually managing to kill off several of the Mithlon the Ilaz Gallum, but it's not the devastating barrage that... Uh, that can't need it, unfortunately, for them. Someone's army is gone, and I think Umbar still have a couple of units left, so yeah, Harad. Harad have got nothing left. They are the first army to fall. Runes still have a couple of units here on the front line, including their Scion Rim. But yeah, it's, it's not going to last. This front line just isn't up to the task they've been given. The Linden forces are just going to keep chewing them up. They need Khan's elites on the front line. They're coming over now. I mean, Khan's elites are in danger of just getting shot by the Sindar archers and the rangers. But they don't have a choice at this point. If they just leave this to happen, their infantry is just going to get chewed up in melee. I think regardless of what happens, if the elves don't lose their heads, they're, they're going to be the winners today. Nurad Warchief Retainers are now on the front line. The strongest unit that the attackers have left and really what they're pinning their hopes on, but I just don't think they're going to have enough. The Linden Pikes are going to be able to at least go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. There's the Khandish General there with his big old Wandao. Elder Runway Harry Hattal are going to move forward as well, I think. The Imladra Spears are going to support this Linden push from Bloodbath McGrath. Nomadic infantry are fighting something. Is that the Maitha Ilaz Gallon? Victory seems certain against whatever it is. Indeed it is. They're actually marching out of the settlement, which is interesting. Tundra's Fox is going to try and hunt them down. The Nomadic Marauders could do damage here. Nurad Warchief Retainers are a tough cookie to beat from the front. The Sindar Archers are shooting at them, I think. The Lothlorian Archers might be trying to get into a better position. Oh, there are Noldor and Blademasters. I didn't notice them. 
yeah, th this is over. There's, there's no way that they beat the Noldor and Blade Masters. Everything would need to single file line into the Nurad Warchief retainers to win in melee now. Those axes could throw a spanner in the works for the defenders, but they would need to do an awful lot of damage. To be fair, it looks like they are doing, doing a ton to that uh, Linden front line. You can see already, I think, the Sindar archers are going to reposition to try and shoot them. Look at them go. Cheap unit of Axemen. Throwing Axemen, rather. And they, they get through their axes pretty quickly. Looks like they might have just run out of ammo, though. Which doesn't make much sense, because they use one of their axes in melee. So I guess they need to keep hold of one when they need to be committed forward. But that was a lot of damage done to the Linden front line there. And the Sindar archers are out, actually out of ammunition, so they're being committed forward into melee. The Nolder and Blade Masters are coming down now, so suddenly... It's a big old fight here, just all melee. The Sylvan Rangers and the Mithril Marines are coming down here. Uh, they should certainly have what it takes to finish off this unit of nomadic infantry. You would imagine, anyway. There goes the Runic General, in and amongst it. That should be more or less the end of Rune, I would imagine. So it's going to come down to just Khan and Umbar. Make the Elas Galen Rover there. I'm not sure what Umbar are actually doing. They might have... Um, they might have desynced. I'm actually very unsure, because the Crossbow Corsairs would be a pretty pretty good thing to have on the front line right about now. The Black Powder Huacha has been caught by the Mather Ilaz Galen, so yeah, I, it may have been possible for the attackers to win with the support of Umbar's units, but they had very little, honestly, by the looks of things. I mean, there are Harbingers, but again, they're depleted. Mm, it is important units, to be fair. I don't know. But... The Nolder and Blade Master are so good. The Lothlorian archers are coming down. They still have Wardens of Elosteria, and the Catapult crew is going to be able to remount. The Harland and Guard has still got ammunition. I don't know. I, I think, yeah, Sindar Arch as well. I think even with those Umbar forces, the result probably would have been the same. And having a look at the potential kills, I mean, it's within 3%, so who knows? Those Umbar forces may very well have been enough to tilt the fight in favour of the attackers. Here come the Wardens of Elos, Tyrion down into melee as well, the Nolder and Blade Masters here on the front line as well, and as far as heavy swordsmen go, one to one, they are the strongest in the game. They beat the upgraded Temple Executioners, just about. They do have less armour, so they're not as good at taking arrow fire, but from a purely melee perspective, they are the strongest. And they'll be getting a nicer unit model as well, in... Uh, in point nine seven, they'll be given the same armor essentially as the Noldoran Guard, which I think is much more befitting of a unit like them. I'm not sure whether that means they'll have good armor values as well. It would make them truly scary if it did. Meanwhile, what's going on back here? And they're still just fighting the Watcher crew. The Watcher crew slowly but surely being killed off by the Mayfair Elas Gallon. And now here comes the rear charge, I think, from the Warns of Alos Tyrion, or is it? Nope, they're going to finish off the Corsair Blackguard, so they are going to engage them. Obviously, the defenders still need to deal with the Umbar forces in melee, so they may still be a factor. The Kandish forces are fighting their hardest on the front line, but the retainers, they, they don't really have the luxury of only fighting from one direction. They're sort of a little bit curved in terms of their formation. And the Brotherhood of the Sword are doing their best to back them up, but it's only a matter of time before the Lorian archers and the Sindar archers get around and start attacking them in the rear as well. Here you can see the Wardens of Elos Tyrion, good in melee actually, for rangers, with their uh, their dual wielding, gives them a little bit more skill, makes them a little bit harder to kill off in melee. This is the Linden General as well, on cleanup duty. If you seem certain, yeah, it's, it's a slow but sure fate that awaits the, uh, the evil men at this point. To the point where we may as well go up into times two speed. The Nurad Warchief retainers will take some time before they give up. You can see the Heru Hatal there are just sort of standing in formation very, very resiliently in shield wall. They really need to just need, need to surround the Nurad Warchief retainers and then they'll start to fall away much more quickly. The Sindar archers are going to do so, as are the Wardens of Elos Tyrion. The Sindar archers actually still have ammunition. Brutal. They're just going to shoot them point blank. Kindred of Caliborn is going to be their new name in the .97 patch, and they're going to have the Silverthorn Arrows. Oh, 
Or do they have the silver thorn arrows? I can't remember. No, oh, for Christ's sake. Announcer. We'll go into one speed because this is obviously rattling through the announcer's uh, announcer sayings. But yeah, I think actually the Sindar archers, as they are in 0.97, will have access to the split shot arrows. And the Outward Company, or the uh, the Galathrim. What are they called in this patch again? I've forgotten. I've been focused on 0.97 names for quite a while at this point. There goes the Candice General. But yeah, I think actually it's the Outward Company, the Golden Armoured variant, which have got access to the Silver Thorns, which essentially knock units over. The added mass doesn't do any extra damage, but it will knock units over, which will disrupt and advance pretty nicely. So Lothlorien's new missile tools are intriguing, to say the least. Meanwhile, here comes the Catapult, just pushing right on in there. Trying to sort of split the formation as much as possible, which is actually not the worst idea. The catapult crew will get not going to enjoy being in melee with the Nirad War Chief retainers, but they're going to get in here nonetheless. Do more damage. Let's go back up to two speed. Still, those Sindar archers are firing away, and this shows how resilient the Nirad War Chief retainers actually are. Because this has been a brutal fight for them. And yet they're still holding on. I mean, they're going to lose, obviously. Especially with more reinforcements on the way. Harland and Guard. Sindar archers are going to move over to the rest of the fortress. And then it's just going to be clean-up duty for the Umbar army, which is still sort of standing in place. Still some Sindar archers over there. The rest of their unit has gone over to try and deal with the crossbow corsairs. When I say try and deal. Crossbow corsairs are not going to put up too much of a fight. Meanwhile, make the Ilaz Gallant are... Going to shoot point blank into the Naran Aru Sentinels with their javelin, so that's going to be, again, a relatively easy task to kill them off. There goes Khan. Khan's army is gone. And so Umbar, even though one of their players clearly desynced and disconnected, the the only the only attacking army left alive. A few additional kills might come their way. Probably not from Crossbow Corsairs, though. Maybe a little bit more likely from Nairon Aru Sentinels. Not for much longer, though. Not with Noldor and Blade Masters closing in rapidly. I do like the Nairon Aru Sentinels as well. As Pikes, the Black Numenorean look looks menacing. Not so menacing in practice today, though. The Elves victorious. I don't know. Maybe if the Umbar player hadn't disconnected, things would have been different. An extra unit of Castamere's Legion and depleted Naran Aru Sentinels on the front line. I think the most significant gain would have been the crossbows, though. They could have been very, very damaging indeed. Even a couple of volleys could have transformed this battle, but as it is, the defenders win. Uh, unsurprisingly, Imladris getting the fewest kills. Again, slightly newer player, I think, because you know, misuse of the knights, misuse of the pikes. And you have to say that if the Imladris player used the knights and those pike men correctly, that would have more than made up for the fact that Umbar had disconnected and the defenders would have won anyway. Uh, Harad getting the fewest kills, again, not too surprising because of the extremely aggressive stance he took and the Lothlorian archers really did a number on him. Linden getting the most kills, I think, mainly because of rangers and javelins in the late game. Uh, so we'll actually see most of the attackers got relatively similar amounts of kills, however, with Tundra's Fox just about getting the most. He also had, by far and away, well, not by far and away, but the largest army on the field, Umbar had the smallest, which again actually worked against them, I think, because it allowed the elves to uh, focus them down a little bit more. Let's have a look what Hunter Wayward did in terms of kills. East Ron Crossbow is getting the most. They probably got up on the hill and did as much damage as they could. The rest of their army, the Sapphire Bladesmen, did okay. You know, good damage at range and good damage in melee. The Shadow Bows as well, Narim. So you can see that pretty much all of the units that did well for him were ranged units because they got up on that hill and started raining death into the settlement. All of his infantry, however, really, really struggled as Rune often will against a faction like Linden, to be fair, but in addition with that catapult there, it was always going to be very, very painful for Rune. So in, in the grand scheme of things, I think Hunter Wayward did okay, and I think in particular as well. Uh, Khan to deserve a special mention for how they also handled themselves. I like how aggressive Harad was, even though it didn't work out for them. I do like that they didn't wait around too long, they got stuck in straight away. But credit to the defenders as well, they organised their defence pretty well. Even though I did point out mistakes, particularly that the Imladris player made, I feel as though, you know, for the most part, they managed to handle a very aggressive and very numerous evil men assault very, very well. And the elves won, so I'm sure that will make a lot of people happy. 
Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this. I'm I'm still contemplating doing a Shogun 2 campaign in the relatively recent Ultimate Immersive mod. I don't know how much interest there would actually be in that. Um, but if if you have any feedback on that, feedback on that, do let me know because I am going to be doing a campaign when obviously point nine seven comes out and Reforged has got its campaign. I'll be doing one. And that is something else that I also want a bit of feedback on. It's who would you want me to play as in the Reforged campaign? Now, I have a couple of preferences myself. Uh, the the two that I was thinking most of was Dol Amroth and Rohan, actually. I was thinking of doing uh, one of those two. Uh, it is worth saying as well that I'm not sure how they actually intend to sort of showcase the campaign, whether or not people on the Discord are going to sort of have dibs, as it were, on factions. Um, but I will say that if I get lumped with someone like the Misty Mountains or Angmar, I will refuse and I will just go my own way and do what I want. Um, that isn't me being a dick, that's me just thinking about the health of my channel, because people will want me to play one of the good factions. I know they will. You know, it will be downvoted if, if I play as, like, Angmar or the Misty Mountains or Mordor or someone like that. They, they won't want that as much. They will want me to play as one of the good factions of Middle-earth, and so that is what I will do regardless of what I'm told uh, by the powers that be. Um, again, that's not me trying to be combative, that's just me, again, thinking about the health of my channel and me not wanting to deal with aggro like, you should play as the elves or you should play as the, the humans, I don't want to see the orcs, that sort of thing. So yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this, and again, feedback is always appreciated. Uh, again, maybe a Shogun 2 campaign, because it is still going to be at least a month before... 0.97 comes out, probably two. And next month, of course, Three Kingdoms will come out, and I do want to do a campaign in that as well. So maybe for a bit of, bit of practice, do a, do a bit of a Shogun 2 campaign in the Ultimate Immersive mod, let me know. And also let me know who you, who you would want me to play as in, in a Reforged campaign, because obviously that's something I'm going to have to start thinking about as well. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll join me for whatever is next.